Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater, and I will be leading you through today's uh, exploration. I work as the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts, and uh, I've been doing the Explorers program for three years now. I'm really happy to be continuing our series online. This is week two where we are exploring textures in our season two of, uh, of being online. And so if you are joining us from the watch party at uh, 11 a.m. on Saturday, October 10th, welcome. I hope you comment live as we go along. If you're watching this at any other time, we'd also love to see any of the work that you do while watching this workshop, or even if you're inspired after, if you have permission from, um, from an adult to come and post, we'd love to see what you're making. So because this is week two, uh, I just want to quickly review. Last week, we explored texture by doing some deep looking and feeling. So what deep looking is, is that we take a little bit more time um, and we really look at something before we move on. Maybe that's getting it really close to our face. Maybe that's just taking a little longer than we would normally take to look at a thing. Um, we explored texture um, by feeling things or touching things because, um, actually here, I've got a definition this week. The definition of texture is the feeling or appearance of a surface. So we were doing that deep looking and looking at a thing and then touching it, uh, their surface, to figure out what texture is. Another definition of texture is the consistency of a substance. And so substance being, um, if you can see through something, so like a cup of juice, maybe it's got an appearance of something, but you can't really, can't really touch it or you can't really hold it, but you can look through it and you can see that it's kind of got stuff hanging in it, it's got a suspension, or maybe it's bubbly. Um, so that's a texture, right? That's a texture of a substance. And so um, what else did we explore last week? We explored, so we were touching, we we're feeling, we explored rubbing or a technique called frottage, which is French, where you have one surface or a texture and then you put a piece of paper on top of it and then you rub a mark making tool so that the, um, the, uh, the texture is transferred onto the paper on top. And then once we had a whole bunch of those rubbings collected, we, we ripped them up or we cut them up and we made a collage. And so you can go back and you can watch that at any time. All of our videos are saved online on Facebook, on YouTube, or at artstarts.com slash explores dash online. Um, so yeah, let's get started with week two. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move these to the side here. I'm gonna keep texture here and our definition so we can see that as we, oh, here, I'm gonna move this. These are our techniques. Move that over. I'm gonna keep our definitions over to the side here so we can keep that in mind while we are exploring. And like I like to do for all of our explorers is to review the rules, the things that we like to keep in mind while we're exploring together. And the first one is respect. And so we practice these rules. Sometimes we're, per we're not perfect at them and that's okay. Each week we come back and we try to do it again. And so we practice respect by checking in with ourselves. How did we do last night? How did we feel? Did we, did we sleep well? Um, did we get breakfast? Did we wake up on the wrong side of the bed? Are we feeling kind of grumpy? Are we sore? All those things play into how we make things for a day and knowing how you feel and naming it can be really important. And equally important is checking in with everybody. So whether you're making by yourself today, you're watching with a friend, you're watching with an adult, if you have a family or a caretaker, foster family, a teacher, another adult that's with you, check in with each other, ask how you're doing because that can also affect how they're making and them knowing how you feel can also um, make make you understand each other better as you're working and sharing your space. And speaking of sharing, we, we practice respect by respecting our tools. So the tools can be just about um, using it in a safe way, uh, washing it when we're all finished, 
but also if we're sharing our tools, right? Um, checking in with people around them. If somebody's waiting to use a tool that you're using and you're gonna need it for a really long time, um, using your words or your sign or writing it down and asking someone how long it's gonna take or asking um, how long they're gonna take. Maybe they can just borrow it for a second and then give it back to you. We also practice respect by acknowledging the land um, and the land keepers. And so this video that you see of me and my hands making is in my studio. And I am a guest on the stolen um, or unceded uh, territories, ancestral territories of the Coast Salish people. And in particular, I am a guest of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish people. And I wanna practice respect by being the best guest that I can be while I am on um, their land, while I consider the land and the waterways um, and while I practice and play with my art today. The second rule with explorers is that nothing is for keeps, which really frees us up because we can take things from the recycling bin. We don't have to worry about it being perfect. We don't even have to start with perfect paper, right? It can be ripped, it can have things on the other side. We can just, we can make our, um, our art store out of the recycling bin. Because when we're all finished, we're gonna take it all apart. And whether that means we're just going to take all the pieces and throw them in the recycling bin or we're gonna rip it up, nothing is for keeps. We're not putting it on the fridge afterwards. We're not framing it. We're just trying things out. So we really can be loose and we can figure out what happens as we go along. Which means that there are no expectations. Sometimes when we're making something for keeps, we have a picture in our head of how something's supposed to be, turn out. And when it doesn't turn out that way, we can be stressed out, or nervous, or anxious about it. We can say we're no good or we might feel like we did a bad job and that reflects on how we make art. But that's not what we're doing today. Today we're just practicing and every time we practice we get better. And so if you have a picture in your head of how something is going to turn out, throw it out today, put it out to the side and try to practice surprise. If you know how something's going to turn out, you've already practiced that thing before. Try something different and that can be scary and that can feel you know, you can feel nervous about it, but because nothing is for keeps and we have no expectations, it doesn't really matter if it turns out badly and you won't know until you try. Okay, so those are our three rules of explorers. I'm gonna put those to the side. They're gonna stay with us as we practice today, but uh, I just want a bit more space to be able to work. All right, so let's get started with week two of textures. And so we've already reviewed what the definition was. So this week, what I want to do is I want to explore textures as it relates to uh, backgrounds or how it can bring energy or emotion to a piece of art making. And what I mean by that is um, when we look at backgrounds, sometimes we have a piece of paper and this is, you know, this is our stage. This is the, the framed place where we're going to create an artwork here. I got my viewfinder hold it down. So everything that's in this space right now is our background, right? We haven't put anything in there. So let's let's start by drawing something, a figure. It could be it could be anything. Oh, you know what? Before we even get started, because you might not have had paper, I'm just going to go back because I am also allowed to make mistakes. Mistake making is okay. We're learning together. I have this sticky note so that you can get ready um, so today, what I've got at my art space, and um, if you don't have this, don't worry about it. You can just watch along. You can also use something in a different way. Maybe you don't have paint, but you do have pencil crayons. How can you approach the same thing that I'm doing, but using pencil crayons? That can be a fun thing to try. Remember, we're exploring today. There is no right way of doing it. So do you have a pencil? Do you have some paper? That's good enough. If you just have a pencil and paper, you can do most of the activities today. And as I said, even if I'm doing something with paint or another tool, how can you do it with just a pencil and paper? I put mark making tools. So that's anything from paint to crayons, pencil crayons, charcoal, dirt, anything that makes a mark on a page. Do you have paint? And I'm just gonna show you a couple techniques today of how to do some textures using paint. You don't have to have paint, but if you do, it's another way that you can uh, explore some textures. Do you have some plastic wrap? And that's just uh, cling wrap, the stuff that you put over food. And you might not have some in the house. A lot of places, 
um, a lot of houses, a lot of restaurants, a lot of community centers, they're no longer using plastic wrap. So if you don't have any, you can also use a plastic bag. And if you don't have a plastic bag, good job. That's awesome that you have eliminated plastic from your life, um, that you don't have any, and so you can just watch what I'm doing. And then finally, some salt. Do you have some table salt? I really like having uh, salt at my art table, and I'll show you why I really like uh, some of the textures that it makes. But remember, you don't have to have any of those things. If you just have a pencil and paper, it's good. And if you just have your eyes and your ears and you wanna watch and or listen, that's good enough. Okay, so what I was saying before was uh, backgrounds, right? So I had my piece of paper, I had my viewfinder, and we're talking about backgrounds. And so what I wanted to say was, let's take one of our pieces of paper, right? It could be from the recycling bin, it doesn't have to be a perfect piece of paper, it doesn't have to have a perfect edge, and we are going to draw a figure. And maybe you've been drawing a figure this whole time while I went and uh, looked at tools, and that's okay too. Maybe you've got a really complicated figure now. And so a figure is just anything, any object. It's the focus of what our picture is. And so I'm gonna keep it really simple and I'm gonna do a really simple human. Yeah. Kind of standing there with a long shirt, boring little hands. Maybe that shirt was really long. There you go. And then some shoes. And you know what? I think I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it just a little bit of hair. Because I put some hair there, I'm gonna give it eyebrows as well. So whatever your figure looks like, you know what? I feel like putting a heart there too. Because <laughs> I'm exploring as well, right? Whatever you wanna make for your figure is cool. So this character's, you know, okay, but where is it standing? Where are they in relation to the world? It's, if you just want them to be paying attention to the figure, by it, I mean the audience. So when you show a picture to somebody, um, the only information they have is the figure that you drew. So if you're continuing to draw your figure, that's okay. You can keep drawing your figure. But if you're ready to keep going and you drew something really simple, just like me, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut or rip it out. And if you have made with me in the past, you know I love to rip paper. But if you have your pair of scissors, which I didn't put on my list, so maybe you don't have a pair of scissors. If you do have them handy, that's great, but you don't have to. You can just start to rip the paper out. And to a certain extent, this is a kind of other texture, right? So what I'm doing is I'm making a rough edge around my character. And if you've ever, uh, if you've ever seen something cut out really perfectly, it has, it has a kind of feeling to it, right? It kind of feels like um, a machine made it. And it did, right? A tool, or sorry, a scissors are just a simple machine that help us do something a little bit perfectly um, or easier than if we didn't have scissors. And so when we're using it with our hands, we're giving a feeling of handmade. We're, we're, we're telling an audience when they see this figure, right? It's got a rough texture. It's not machine made. It was definitely handmade. All right, so I've taken away my background. I'm gonna take this piece of paper. I'm gonna save it for later. We can keep using that. And so right now my background is whatever I put my figure on, right? And so if I were, I was gonna take my, my viewfinder again, my background is my cutting board. And so the texture, the texture is these lines. If you could see really close, um, I can see, I have these little tiny squares and dots behind in between on the boxes, which helps me um, further divide up these squares so that when I'm cutting things, I can cut straight. And so there's, there's a kind of order. There's a, there's a, a pattern behind this character and it looks very um, ordered. It looks very neat and very tidy, which is kind of interesting because it's different from the rough texture on the outside. What else do you notice? What else do you notice when I put it there? Well, I notice the color. I notice that the background is green and that my character is on white paper. And so the contrast is really interesting. I noticed that 
this is kind of plainer than back here. So I pay attention to this character before I pay attention to the background. Whereas when it was on the white, the white surface, sure, I pay attention to it first, but it's kind of lost in all this whiteness, right? You just kind of, you just kind of see it. It also, you know, it loses the roughness around the outside. It looks a little bit cleaner. Whereas when we take it out of our background, all of these different things we start to notice. All right, so we have our figure. We have a plain background. Now, let's start exploring some backgrounds, some textures that we make ourselves in relation to our figure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some ordered patterns. And what do I mean by ordered? What I mean by ordered is that we are going to create a pattern and we're going to repeat it over and over again. So I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna pick a shape, any shape. You know, the first shape that comes to mind is a circle. You don't have to do this, but because it's a little bit clearer on my artboard because you're watching my artboard, I'm gonna tape this down just so the paper doesn't curl. And you can do this too if you have some painter's tape. And if you're working on a surface that it's okay um, to tape things down. You don't wanna just tape something on um, a wood table or a table that doesn't belong to you because it could mark up the table. But this space, my space is uh, designed for art making, so this is okay. So I'm gonna pick a circle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill up the background with circles, but I'm gonna do it in an ordered or measured or precise way so that the space between each of the shapes is the same. You can pick whatever shape you want. You can pick the distance. You can pick how big or how small it is. You can fill it in or you can't, or you don't have to fill it in. However you want to make it, make your, your, your page filled with a, with a pattern, but try to make it so that it repeats, so that it's the same thing over and over again. Here's what I mean by that. Remember, your pattern doesn't have to look like mine, but if you can't think of a pattern that you wanna draw, you can totally copy mine. You have my permission. See, I'm trying to line up my circles, at least the bigger circles, smaller circles. I didn't do such a good job, and that's okay. We'll get to notice how that looks different. This time I'm gonna try though. What do you notice while you're drawing the ordered patterns? How do you feel? How does your hand feel? What do the people around you feel while they're making theirs? Oh, my circles are bigger this time. That's okay. I think it's because I'm talking. <laughs> it's hard to do two things at once, right? Talk and draw. That's why people always say that you're, you're supposed to focus, try and do one thing at a time so that you can be mindful and present thinking about the thing that you do rather than being distracted. Ah, most people say they can do two things at once, um, but it just means you're not doing both things necessarily as well as you could if you were putting all of your focus towards it. And I'm proving that by talking and drawing. So I'm gonna turn off my voice for one more minute and do one more row of patterns. And if you're continuing to do your patterns, that's okay. Okay, so I filled my page up. You know what, I'm gonna do one more because I, I wanna end it like this. 
Oh, but I'm not going to practice what I said before, and I'm just going to do quick row of circles while I'm talking. So if you want to keep drawing your pattern background, your ordered pattern, ordered pattern, right, the where we keep the same, the repetition, then go for it. You don't have to be finished just yet. But we're going to take the pattern that I just drew, and I'm going to take my figure again, and I'm going to put it in front of it. And all of a sudden, doesn't that look a lot more interesting as if there's action happening. So here, I've cut off the feet in this one because I wanted to go this way. Oh, I have to go this way as well. I just don't know if my patterns are big enough. Oh, yeah, it is. Cool. Okay, so now I can have my whole, whole figure. That's interesting as well. If you have your viewfinder, and if uh, you don't have a viewfinder, you can go back and you can check out our first ever episode um, on framing where we actually built one of these. But basically, this is just a piece of cardboard where I've cut out one rectangle and another rectangle. And this is just a good way of having a frame so that you can look through the world and you can kind of isolate all the things around. You can do all these messy things like tape, um, and then you can just focus on the thing that you want to focus by cutting it off and using your viewfinder or your frame. Okay, what, what do you notice when I put it horizontally and I cut out some of the figure versus when I have all of the figure and I have more of the background. I think both of them look way more interesting. I feel like maybe there's something going on in the background. Maybe this character is in a place. Maybe this character is underwater. Maybe this character is in a glass of soda <laughs> because of all those circles, right, that are coming up. If I had drawn all the circles all the texture in the background the same, how would it be different, right? I decided I wanted to do circles all throughout, but I did some big circles and small circles. Sorry, small circles, big circles, small circles, big circles. But what if I had done it all the same, all uniform, all exactly the same? Maybe you did do it all exactly the same. How does your pattern look different from mine? Let's try another ordered pattern. Okay, so this one, if I was going to use a description word, what do you think I should use for a bunch of circles like this? And it looks different, at least to me, when I don't have the frame on it, looking at it like this versus looking at it like this. Doesn't it look different to you? I really do feel like this could be somewhere. Like this could be a, a background or a wallpaper or maybe a whole bunch of holes or maybe, maybe a factory. It looks different when I put my frame around it. But like this, it really does just look like a piece of paper that I put a whole bunch of bumps on. And that's kind of what I was going for, was kind of a lumpy, bumpy surface if we were talking about textures. Let's try a different texture. Again, let's do another ordered pattern. I'm gonna move this, but I'm gonna keep my tape so I can tape it down, and make it real clear in the, in the video. We're gonna do another one but this time, instead of shapes, we're gonna do lines. And remember, if you're still making your first pattern, that's okay. You don't have to do it the same speed as me. You can go as slowly or as quickly as you want. You're already drawing something else. Maybe you're drawing a new figure. Maybe you're just listening. That's okay as well. You don't have to be doing things at the same time as me. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, or at least what I'm gonna do is, I found this ruler here and you don't have to have a ruler. You could do, again, whatever texture you want. If you have other paper, you could line up paper and use the edge of the paper to trace, whatever you want. But for my pattern, I'm going to do a bunch of lines. Mm, you know what, I think I have a clear one, yeah. <laughs> I'm lucky because I'm in my studio, so I have a whole bunch of tools here. You can see I've got some paint <laughs> on my on my ruler here. But what's nice about this ruler is that you can see there's kind of this clear line here and that lets me see how far it's been from the last line I drew. So I can keep a really consistent line by being able to line it up to the last thing that I drew. So I'm just doing another pattern. If you're still working on the same pattern or maybe you wanna do something different, what happens if you fill up your page with wavy lines, with a bunch of X's, with a whole bunch of dots? 
But remember, what we're doing is, is we're trying to do it all the same, all the same and in a pattern. So if you're doing a bunch of dots, try and line them all up in one line. If you're doing a whole bunch of star shapes or triangles or however you want to do your background. There you go. So I've got a bunch of lines now. How does this change when I put my character in front of it? Oh, again, I get that kind of sense of wallpaper. But if he wasn't, or sorry, if it or they weren't smiling or she wasn't smiling, what would, what would it look like? Could it be, could it be that they're maybe in a cage? And what if I change the direction? Here, I'm gonna pull up the, the scissors right now, right? Because then we can, we can look at it from all angles and keep the tape off to the side so we can keep using it. What happens there? Now it looks like maybe they're on a, piece of um, lined paper, right? Maybe they pull, they, they uh, are in a, a notebook. If I had little dots along the side here, maybe it would look like lined paper from a binder. Maybe they're at the side of a building. Let's get our viewfinder out, right? All of a sudden, a textured background makes your drawing look that much more interesting than if it had been on a white background right? On a plain background. Well, this, that's the same. I keep saying white, but if it was just on a tan background or a black background or a blue background or whatever color paper you have, right? Here, I wonder if I turned around in my studio. Yeah, I've got some blue paper right here. Let's check it out. Now, I already know that there's going to be some contrast that happens. I really like this paper too. I don't know if it's gonna show up in my video, but it's kind of textured as well. It's got, it's got kind of these crosses and lines in it and it feels kind of rough and bumpy, but it still looks very precise as if it went, was from a machine. So it doesn't look rough like my character looks rough. So remember I said before, um, it's gonna be kind of plain, but check it out. Just, just the white paper on this background, on this textured background, already does something, and I really think that it's the textured outline of this, of this figure that makes it look like this character, they've come from another page and they've walked into a new place, right? So it gives it some life, some dimension, something that it didn't have before if you just had a plain drawing. And so if you've got some sketches in a sketchbook or on a piece of paper and you want to make it look just a little bit more interesting, maybe you're making a card for someone. Maybe you're making a picture of, uh, of yourself to give to a friend. Taking that picture or taking that character and then cutting it out or ripping it out, because remember, trying out those different ways of the texture around the outside is gonna make it feel different um, all on its own, but then putting it on different surfaces is also going to give it a different look and feel. Really, really simple, simple ways of uh, adding texture or layers uh, to your image. But, but you can see what I'm saying, right? This, this definitely, I think, is the most boring. It, it says something about simplicity, right? It's kind of simple, but it's certainly not as interesting is when you have that high contrast there of the character on the dark background. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you like the, the plain drawing on the white background? And that's okay as well, right? You could also color in your figure, right? Let's try that. Let's use an ordered pattern. Uh, I'm gonna pull down a mark making tool. What have I got? Oh, there's my pencil crayons. Whatever mark making tool you have, if you just have a pencil, that's okay. You don't have to have um, a special colored mark making tool. I'm gonna grab a few here. Here we go. Okay. So still sticking with the ordered, the ordered pattern, we're gonna color in this character, right? Or your character but only using an ordered pattern. So again, I'm gonna do those circles, but I'm only gonna draw the circles the same size. Here we 
no randomness. Try and keep the spaces between them to be almost exactly the same. And if you don't want to color in your figure, that's okay. You could draw a different figure and color in that one. And you don't even have to have um, a figure like a, a, a human or a tree or something. You could just have a shape. You could be doing this entire um, exploration with a triangle that you're now coloring in with circles or a triangle colored in with triangles, right? You could do one where you've got the figure like a human or a self-portrait or a dog or a house or a pair of shoes um, and then draw the shape one and put it through the same exercises, right? Color in them similarly or use the same colors or use the same textures and then switch it around and see what you notice. What's different? What's different when you use um, a human versus just a shape? I don't know, you gotta try it out and then tell me about it. If you have permission, you could tell me what you think or what happens um, in the comments. Okay, so there's my ordered pattern. Already, I think that this sweater looks interesting, but by doing an ordered pattern, it also kind of makes you um, assume that the, the shirt is made out of a specific kind of material. Have you ever seen a, a material that has kind of these circles like this? What does it remind you of? What does it remind you of? It reminds me of wool. If you've ever seen wool, it usually has kind of these curly, uh, the curly material, right? The curly fur, the curly, uh, the curly wool, right? And so all of a sudden, I think that this sweater looks like it looks like a sweater, right? Before I called it a shirt, but as soon as I put the circus in there, I feel like it's a sweater now. That it's it's um, it's a warmer sweater than it was before I even added the texture. Now, what do you think changes if we just color it in? Let's, let's do a comparison right now. I'm gonna make the sleeves and I'm just gonna color it in just as dense as I can. And you could do the same thing. If, if you have a shape, you could section it off or you could just pick a part of whatever you're making. The sleeves just made sense for me, but I mean, I could have done just the bottom of it. In fact, I will, because I don't have to just do the parts that were uh, marked off by my uh, by my drawing. There we go. So I got it at the bottom and the top, and well, you know, I'm gonna put it at the top as well, and the sleeves. There we go. So what's changed? Now I have a smooth texture, right? So now it doesn't feel like if I touched this in real life, it would have the same feeling as this. So the appearance of this still looks like wool to me, but maybe this is cotton now. Maybe this is a different kind of fabric or a different kind of material that's around the outside edge. And for me, that would be good. I'm allergic to wool, so I wouldn't want the wool near my neck. So if this was me, I definitely wouldn't want the wool over there, but maybe I want the warm, the warm in the middle. And so maybe I've got another shirt underneath. So just by coloring this, in different ways and different textures, I've created a story, right? So maybe this character does like wool, but is allergic like me. Or maybe they started making a sweater and the sleeves are really hard, so they sewed themselves a fabric pair of sleeves. Or maybe this was a secondhand sweater that they bought and then it started to unravel and then they decided to, uh, you know, upcycle it and put in another shirt on top of it. Or maybe this is a sweater vest and underneath there is a smooth cotton t-shirt. Here we go, I'm just gonna add some lines here. And so I'm telling a story by adding texture. And that's kind of what you're doing when you draw a picture. You, you're telling a story and they call that the narrative of a picture. And there's all these things that we see and we make assumptions when we add these things. So before when it was just a drawing, we assume that this, that this character um, is kind of plain, it's kind of basic. Maybe, um, maybe it wasn't drawn by a really professional artist. Maybe it was really, really simple. Um, maybe they're younger. And then as soon as you start adding color and texture, 
you're adding details. You're adding things that give the audience, when they look at it, clues to what they can read when you make your picture. Okay, so let's move on from ordered patterns. So the idea is that it's all the same thing and it tells one kind of story. What happens when we start looking at random patterns? And what do I mean by random patterns? So if this was ordered, what do you think random is? Well, I'm getting ready with my new piece of paper. Can you draw what you think is a random pa pattern on a piece of paper? Because remember, there's no wrong or right. We're just trying out different things. And so my way is, is also just one way of doing it. I might do it one way and you might come up with a completely different way. What does random mean? Random means that there isn't any order. We're not really thinking about it. We're not really planning it. We're just letting whatever happen, happen. And so when I was talking earlier about salt, you remember I was talking about salt? Can you control exactly where salt comes out of a shaker? Especially if you have a whole bunch of dots like this. Let's find out. Let's see how controlled we can get. Oh, you know what's funny? I brought my paint over, but I have no water. So I'm just gonna grab my water, take a walk in my studio over to the sink. Need to get up and get some water too, that's okay. There we go. I'd forgotten my plastic as well, so this is a good time for me to grab my plastic. Bring my water over. There we go. Cool. Now, now I'm even more ready. <laughs> and you can get up at any time while we're making, right? You can pause the video as well and come back later. Maybe you're feeling a little bit tired and you started this first part and you want to come back later. That's okay too. There's no right way to do this. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a bunch of water on the page in a random way. I'm not really thinking about it, just getting my paper real wet. And then I'm gonna just start grabbing some color. And I'm not thinking about it. I'm not choosing the perfect color, just whatever I can grab, and I'm just gonna put it down on the page. And the cool thing about this is that even if you were working with somebody else at the same time, whatever colors they chose, even if they chose the same colors as you um, in the exact same order, their page still wouldn't look like you because the way that you add things randomly to the page is going to be different from how they add things to the page, right? The way that you move your arm, the way that you hold your brush, if you're using your pencils or another mark making tool right now, and you're just adding marks onto your page randomly, right? It's going to be your hand and your wrist. And even if somebody was looking at it and was trying to copy it perfectly, it still wouldn't be the same as yours. And that's why sometimes in art making, copying can be really interesting because even if you try really hard to make it a perfect copy, you really never will. Even if somebody is tricked into thinking that it is, it'll never be exactly perfect, it'll never be exactly the same because the person who made the first one didn't make the second one. There's always going to be something that's a little different. And so that's why copying can be really fun and interesting um, because you get to see what happens. Okay, so I wanna let this dry a little bit so that we can check it out while it's a little bit random. But what I like to do when I wanna go faster with these kind of things is I'll take another piece of paper and then I'll press it down on the first piece because remember random and check it out just by using two pieces of paper I was able to get a background that I didn't plan for look at these really cool creases right I didn't plan for those creases but that ends up being really great right really interesting something that I wouldn't have expected Okay, I'm gonna pick up this piece of paper and I'm gonna put it, oop, and it ripped, and that's okay. Remember, nothing is for keeps, so it doesn't have to, doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm gonna move this to the side so I can let it dry a little bit in the last part of our uh, workshop, and we'll look at it in the end. But I've already got my paint piece, right? I didn't even have to wait for that first one to dry. I was able to take an impression or kind of like a rubbing. Remember how we did last week, we took pieces of paper and we went on to another surface and we rubbed using a pencil crayon or a crayon? Well, this time I took the texture, 
by just pressing my paper on some wet paint. Okay, so what do you think? What do you think it's gonna look like when I add my figure to this random pattern texture now? It feels kind of rough. I'd also kind of use the word organic. Organic meaning um, that it grew from nature, right? It kind of feels like maybe this is a bush or a tree or a vine. And that's the neat thing about random patterns is that when you look at an ordered pattern, it still feels very machine, right? So just like I was saying with the, the uh, scissors earlier, the ruler is another kind of tool. And so this is a simple machine that is helping me to make something. And so this looks more mechanical. This looks like a printer could have done this or uh, a machine with lines could have done this thing. Whereas this doesn't look like a machine made it. It looks like I made it. It looks like I went outside and I took a rubbing of maybe uh, uh, some bark or I tried to make a random tree. So that's what I mean by organic. When you, when you practice random pattern making or rat, random textures, it's going to have a different feel just in the background. All right, now let's take our character, our figure, and put them on top there. What do you think? What do you see when you see this character on that now? I think I'm gonna, my character really wants to flip up off of the page. <laughs> there we go, that should be a little bit better. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna tuck that in under there. What do you think? I really like it. Not only do I really like the colors because they're kind of active, because I chose a whole bunch of different colors so it wasn't really planned, it feels like there's some motion. It feels like they could be outside. Or maybe they're on a paint, um, a painted wall. Maybe there's an explosion or fire going on behind them. Maybe they're standing in front of a pink tree. So many more possibilities when we have this textured background and it feels so much more animated. It feels so like there's more life going on. And even though this is just a cartoon drawing, it feels like there's more things going on. There are more things for your eye to look at, which can make it a lot more interesting when you're looking at a picture. Okay, so I said that we were gonna try one with paint and we're gonna try one more with a plastic bag. Okay, so I'm gonna take another piece of paper. This is another paint one. And I have a slightly thicker piece of paper. Because I'm trying to do this in a, um, a certain amount of time, um, that's why I'm using this thicker paper because it should dry a little bit easier. So here's my plastic bag. Remember how I said you can use cling wrap? You can use cling wrap, but you can also use a plastic bag. <coughs> and it doesn't have to be clear. You could use um, a white, plastic bag, black plastic bag, colored plastic bag, however, however uh, plastic bag you find. Um, but I'm just going to use this clear one so you can see it. And so I'm going to crinkle up a bit of it in my hand. And where is, where did I put my paintbrush? Can you see my paintbrush? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I put it off to the side. <laughs> that happens to me all the time when I'm, I'm working. Why is Good to put things back uh, in the same place every time so you don't lose it especially if uh, you're working with somebody who is uh, low has low vision or blind right if you can put back things every single time they're gonna have a better time finding uh, where you put the things and you can practice that too right if you, if you made you made something with your eyes closed it'd probably be much easier if you did it if you put the things back in the same place Okay, I'm gonna add one more color to this. This is really great, right? You get to feel, right? We're talking about texture right now. You get to feel what the plastic bag felt like before it had paint on it. And then you get to feel it again when you paint. Can you, have you ever painted on your hand before? Now's your chance, right? You don't even have to worry about getting messy or about um, it being dangerous because of uh, toxicity. So poison, right, in the paint. Now I'm using a water-based paint, but if you were using a dangerous kind of paint, uh, you want to wear gloves and you want to be protected. But this is a cool way uh, to get to experience what it feels like to have, to have your hand painted. 
uh, just one more color. There we go. Okay. So we've put a bunch of this onto. So what do you think? Before I even do what I'm going to do, what do you think is going to happen? And you can pause if you want to talk about that a little bit, if you want to, if you want to guess. But if you're watching live, you ready? And there you go. I'm just going to pick it up right away. Check it out. So I've got kind of a splatter pattern without having to splatter with like a toothbrush or my paintbrush. So this is a lot cleaner, right? Not only is it cleaner on my hand, but it was cleaner for the page. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to see if I can get this over here. <laughs> it's hard to direct in one place. Oh, I said I was going to use the salt. Okay, I'm going to use the salt next. <laughs> I got excited about the paper bag. Or sorry, the plastic bag. All right, so now I'm going to move it around and make sure that it use my plastic. Nice. It's nice because it's clear, right? I can see where I want the marks to go. I'm going to see how much of the page I can mark up. There we go. Check it out. Right? We couldn't have planned that. We couldn't have, we couldn't have figured out exactly where the creases of the plastic bag were going to go. We couldn't have decided, especially when we put those different colors there, exactly what colors we're going to go where. And so you get this really cool splatter pattern that you wouldn't have uh, you wouldn't have been able to do if you had been trying to do it really really precise. And that can be exciting. It does feel exciting, right? I use that word exciting because the unknown, practicing surprise, is exciting, is interesting. And so the background now has again that organic, but kind of explosive. So remember when I was talking about fire before? Maybe there are fireworks going on behind. Maybe they're at a concert and the lights are going wild. Or maybe they're walking through a forest and those are the leaves in the background. Or maybe they're in front of a textured wallpaper. There's all these maybes that it could be now by, by adding the texture to the background. I feel like this one was more of a rough texture. Um, whereas even though this was kind of random with the paint before, I feel like this is more of a, a smooth. I don't get the same feeling when I look at this one uh, of it being trees. I said, I said leaves and it could be, I guess, um, because it has all of those uh, little sections like leaves. But I feel like this one looks more like a leaf than that one. What do you think? Right, so both of these were done uh, using random patterns. And I'm gonna do one more. I said I would do salts as well. And I just got excited about the plastic bag. So put that over to the side. How did it look when you did it? If you had access to a plastic bag, does yours look the same? Did you use more water than me? Did you even use paint? And if you have permission, I would love to find out in, uh, in the comments. All right, so we're gonna do one more random pattern. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take another piece of paper again. And I'm going to add a whole bunch of paint to my page here. Is this paper drying out at all? Well, maybe not in an hour. I can bring it back next week for week three of textures. You can come back and you can see how that page dried out. So I'm going to put a bunch of different paint on the page. This one too, it might not, it might not uh, be fully dry in time, but uh, I can show you next week as well. All the more reason for you to join me for week three. That's generally why in these workshops, uh, I like to use pencil crayons and crayons and pencils because uh, things dry a lot faster but for you wherever you're making if you have more than an hour that you can be exploring using paint and I think I've said dirt in the past so if you're if you're able to go out into uh, a yard or a park and bring um, a cup of water with you there's no reason why you couldn't take a paintbrush and some dirt and see what happens right bring your piece of paper and uh and get some get some mud going what happens when you paint with mud? Can you do any of these things with mud? And then once your paper dries, 
with the mud, take your drawn characters and put them in front of the mud. What does that look like? And instead of salt, like I'm showing you right now, what happens when you use sand? So there we go. I'm going to add some salt to the paper. And then do I have some extra water here? Oh, I do right over here. So I'm going to add just a bit more water. Do you see what's happening? So wherever the salt is sitting in the paint, the salt is picking up a whole bunch of the paint and is pooling it around the salt and giving it a bumpy texture. And so just while it's wet, this looks really interesting. It looks like um, around where the salt is, it's getting darker because it's pulling the paint over to it. What do you think this is going to look like when it dries? And I think that's where I'm going to leave us this week. Actually, you know, before we go, before we go, I'm just going to hold this up over the wet so we can compare it um, next week. So just layers like this. I'm going to hold it like that. And I'm going to take my viewfinder. What do you think? It looks interesting, doesn't it? It looks even more here. I wonder if I, I'm going to tape. I'm going to tape my figure like this so I can get it a little closer so it's easier to see for you. There we go. Oh, <laughs> it's still going to want to fall down. That's right. There you go. What do you think? Right? Doesn't that look really interesting? And depending on the colors that you put in the background, it feels like maybe there's snow falling or maybe rain. If I had done this all in blues, what if I'd done it all in greens? What if I had done it all in browns? What would happen? And that's the fun thing about exploring is with the what ifs. Try it one way, find out what happens, and then just change one thing. Change the color, change the medium. So from pencil crayons to crayons or pencil to paint. Just change the one thing and do it exactly the same and see what's different every time. Okay, so by setting up for next week, I'm going to leave this over to the side. Everything else I'm gonna throw out or put into my recycling bin because we remember nothing is for keeps, but for me, I'm gonna keep this to next week so that we can check out what it looks like with the, um, with the paint, the random paint that we, we left there and how it dried and then with the salt so that we can see how it looked like if you didn't do the paint and the salt. And if you do it as well, I would love to see how yours turns out in the comments. So thanks again so much for joining us this week. I'm going to leave my camera running a little bit longer so that you can see me clean up because we always want to prioritize cleaning up. We explored random patterns and ordered pattern texture um, and um, how when we add texture to a background, it can add emotion and it can make a scene feel more dynamic or add to the narrative or the story of what the eyes or what the audience's eyes can read when they look at a piece of artwork. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We will be back uh, next week for Saturday, October 17th for week three. The week after that, we will be having a special Halloween workshop special. And then the last Saturday of the month, will be in the Art Starts Gallery um, showing, or still it's still gonna be a streamed online performance of one of our um, touring artists giving a performance. So we hope to see you every Saturday at 11. All of these videos are archived. So if you're watching this not on a Saturday, that's okay. You can join us at any time um, and we'd love to have you. So I will see you next week and let's start cleaning up.